In this presentation, we're going to look at the distinction between first and second order properties that's mentioned in chapter 18 in J.L. Mackey's short piece, The Subjectivity of Values. Before we can appreciate the distinction between first and second order properties, we need to say some things about properties in general. So we need to distinguish uh, properties from uh, the individual things that have them. So what a property is, a property is just a way that some something can be, right? So for example, consider, suppose these individuals are all bald. Um, baldness is a way that something can be. Uh, so it's a property that they all uh, have. Um, individuals are objects that have properties, um, but aren't themselves properties. They're not had by other things, right? So George Washington, for example, he's an individual and Abe Lincoln, that he's an individual, and they both have the property of um, being a U.S. president, um, but they themselves aren't properties, right? So Washington is an individual, Lincoln's an individual, they're different individuals, and uh, they can't like have each other in the same way that they can have the property of being uh, a president. Um, so on this way of seeing the world, it's made up of or composed by uh, a bunch of individuals and those individuals can have various properties and they can also stand in various relations to each other. So for example, um, being older than, right? So one individual here might be older than another individual here or being uh, located in various places. So one individual might be located to the south of another individual and uh, so on. So now we're in a position to state uh, what the difference between first and second order properties is. Uh, so a, a first order property, that's just a way that some individual could be, right? So we've already looked at a couple of examples. So baldness is a first order property. Um, being a US president is a first order property. Being red is a first order property and so on. Uh, same thing with first order relations. These are just ways that individuals can be related to one another. So being to the left of, being older than, being taller than, those are all first order relations. A second order property is a property of a property. So second order properties are ways that first order properties can be, right? And we'll look at some more examples. Uh, we'll look at some examples in, a, in just a minute. Second order relations, those are relations uh, between first order properties and relations. So there are ways that first order properties can uh, stand uh, to each other. Okay, now let's look at some examples. So uh, as an example of a first order property to generate some examples, just pick any first order individual. So pick um, some human being or other, right? Say Dave, a, an ASU student, um, or any feature that you might have. Um, so, so Dave, let's say, is tall, handsome, 24 years old, and an ASU student, right? All of these are properties of Dave, um, who is an individual, so they're all first order properties. In general, any feature that an individual can have or does have is a first order property. So being red, round, heavy, dull, etc., these are all examples of first order properties. Second order properties are a little bit uh, trickier, but uh, we can multiply examples by just considering any uh, first order property. So uh, for example, the property being red, and then ask what kind of features does that property have? What is the property like? Well, um, it has the property of being a color. It has the property of being a primary color. Uh, red also has the property of being a property, right? and so on. So uh, any feature that redness has is a second order property. In general, any feature that a first order property has uh, or could have is a second order property. So consider the relation uh, of being taller than, this is a first order relation. Any feature that it has is a second order property and it has uh, a number of interesting features. For example, it's transitive, right? So if I'm taller than you, and you're taller than Sally, then I'm taller than Sally. Um, this is a feature that uh, this property, sh this relation shares with the relationship of numerical identity, right? So if A is identical to B and B is identical to C, then A is identical to C. Uh, it's a symmetric, uh, sorry, it's a transitive relationship. 
Um, taller than is also an uh, asymmetric relationship. So if I'm taller than you, you're, you can't be taller than me. And it's non-reflexive, right? So uh, I can't be taller than myself. So any feature that a first order property or a first order relation can have is uh, itself a second order property. So this generates uh, a sort of hierarchy of properties, right? And, uh, and individuals. We start at the very basement level here, uh, individual things. These are things that can't be had by anything else. Um, so cabbages, kings, Washington, the actor, Patrick Stewart, the Lincoln Monument, and so on. Um, at the next level of the hierarchy, we have first order properties, and these are the properties that our individual things can have, right? Um, at the next level of the hierarchy, we have second order properties, and these are the properties that first order properties can have. We can imagine the hierarchy going on uh, indefinitely with third order properties that apply to second order properties, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, one thing to observe here is that um, individual things, while they can have first order properties, they can't have second order properties, right? That um, generates some really um, weird things, right? So imagine Patrick Stewart, right, the actor, um, he, ha can, he has the first order property of being bald. So he's got the property of baldness. Um, but it would be very strange to attribute to him the property of being a color or being a shape um, or being transitive, right? Um, that's not the sort of thing that Patrick Stewart can be. Uh, similarly, uh, first order properties like redness and tallness, uh, they have second order properties. So redness is a color, right? And that makes perfect sense. But redness can't have other first order properties, right? So it makes sense to say that red is a color, but it does not make sense to say that red is tall or red is triangular or red is bald, right? This is because second order properties uh, apply to first order properties, um, but first order properties don't apply to other first order properties. Similarly, um, first order properties apply to individual things, um, but individual things don't have second order properties and individual things don't apply to other individual things, right? So it's weird to say Bill Washington, but we can say um, Bill's tall. Okay, so to finish up, let's look at uh, how this distinction applies when it comes to judgments about morality. Um, so consider first order moral judgments. Right? These are cases in which we're applying a first order property to some particular thing or uh, action or person. So uh, consider the first order, order judgment, kicking puppies is wrong. Right? That is a judgment in which we attribute a first order property, uh, moral wrongness, to some individual uh, type of action. Um, and in these other claims, we are doing something similar, right? So here's a first order relation, a moral relation, being a better person. And we're saying that Alice stands in that relation to uh, James. Uh, and in this last case, we're, we're uh, attributing the moral property of praiseworthiness to a particular individual thing, Jim's action. I'll contrast this with second order moral judgments. And these are cases in which we're saying that a particular moral property has some second order property. So consider the properties of rightness and wrongness. These are moral properties. And if we make the judgment that rightness and wrongness are dependent on culture, we're saying that those two properties, rightness and wrongness, have this further property, the second order property of being culture dependent. And that's a property that applies to rightness and wrongness. Same thing if we say courage is a subjective property. Um, we're saying of some particular first order property, the property of being cour courageous, uh, that it has some further property, a second order property uh, of being subjective, right? Being such that whether or not it applies to a particular individual depends on who's doing the judging as to whether that person is courageous. And lastly, here we have um, Mackey's thesis that there are no objective values. We can see this as a second order moral judgment uh, being made about every single value property, right? Uh, where moral properties are included in value properties. So rightness, wrongness, goodness, badness, 
um, and so on. Those are all value properties. And what Mackey is saying is that those properties have the further property, the second order property of being non-objective, uh, right? So they're in some sense subjective, whether that means that they depend for their application on the thoughts and feelings of human beings or societies or cultures or something like that. Um, so this claim can be read as a claim that attributes a second order property of non-objectivity to a class or set of first order properties, namely all of the moral or value properties.